This is the Frat House Sports Show. And now, for this week's completely different and often humorous take on everything sports, here are Frat House Mike, Uncle Mark, and Sidekick. All righty, yeah, welcome back to another Frat House Sports Show. I'll tell you, we haven't done one like this in quite some time. Yeah, we've got a full-blown video production going. I'm trying to think, when was the last time we did one of these? Maybe the early part of September, maybe the yep. last week of August, something like that. But it's kind of become a tradition that we have to do this at least twice a year. One of them is for our NFL preseason roundtable program. We're not in preseason. I'm looking at all the snow outside here at the frat house because that's where we are. You're wondering, hey, where are these guys? We are at the frat house. Uh, but we have to do one at the end of the season as well. And traditionally, that's what we've always done. What you're listening to right now, what you're watching right now, is the Frat House Sports Show's number 177th, but it is our annual NFL end of season roundtable program. Joining me as usual, we got the Frat House gang. I got Brandon here. I got Uncle Mark here. We got Sidekick on the screen right there via uh, Skype and coming to us from St. Louis. Uh, sidekick, how we doing? Good to see you. Good to see you guys. Uh, pleased we could have you in the frat house, even if you're not actually technically in the frat house, but uh, we, we, good to see you. Uh, for those of you that are actually hearing this right now uh, on our radio broadcast, well, a couple of things let me remind you. First of all, don't forget to give us a call in, but we're going to be holding off on the calls until about midway point through this because what you're actually hearing is a uh, a, a recorded version of this as we recorded it a couple of days in advance of our live radio broadcast. But when you call in, 347-826-9964, that's how you can get hold of us, and that's how you can get in and touch base with any of us here on some of the topics that we're going to be talking about. Now, guys, I think you know the rules because we've done this numerous, numerous times. We have Jen, our a timekeeper over in the corner here, and she's going to be timing us to about nine minutes per topic. So when the horn goes off, that means we just ignore her as we always do, and we keep going forward, okay? Yeah, there's the horn, and that means uh, we must get going. Yeah, like, what, is, what did it mean in the, uh, in the, in the, uh, oh, it's, 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 oh, they're just getting started. Yeah. They're just getting started. Hit the gas. <laughs> hey, what, what's that saying about the horn, you know, the horn blows? Uh-oh. Uh, uh, I don't uh, know. We don't, well, it doesn't matter. We don't want to go there because Sidekick brought it up. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, let's get into our first topic for, uh, remember, this is end of season now. Um, all right, gentlemen, we had a, <laughs> you know, for, for, for want of a better word, we had kind of a, a situation, a scandal. No, I don't want to use that word. Well, anyhow, the NFL's got themselves another situation uh, brewing right now. And here we go. We're at the end of the season, for gosh sake. This has been a tough season for the NFL. Uh, they've had to deal with a lot of issues. We had all kinds of ones on the front end. We had Ray Rice. We had Adrian Peterson. Um, you know, in many respects, I think fans don't feel, the media didn't feel, a lot of that was all handled very, very well at all. Uh, now we've got the situation with the AFC Championship. Uh, what happened to the footballs that the New England Patriots were using? How, in fact, did they get to be two uh, pounds under pressure? Uh, 11 out of 12 of them. However, Indianapolis, uh, the balls they were using didn't seem to have any effect whatsoever. Um, investigations are ongoing. Oh, Lord. Um, this has been a mess, I'm sorry, for the NFL. Uh, I titled it as uh, we've got ourselves a season of crisis of confidence, crisis of confidence, and a crisis of credibility. Now, it was suggested a number of months ago, Uncle Mark, I think you brought it up, that this situation is not going to get corrected until we see a change in the commissioner position. I said I didn't think it was going to happen, but i got to tell you, with the events of the past week, I think that that's the only thing that's going to bring back fan confidence is if we get a change in leadership. Uh, Brandon, go ahead, jump it off for us. Well, I agree. I mean, the the leaderships look stupid. They're, they're very indecisive. They, they seem to drag their feet on everything, including this. Um, yes, well, as we were filming here yesterday, Bill Belichick gave us our deflate gate right. uh, science lesson <laughs> on footballs. 
And, um, you know, take it for what it's worth. You know, I'm a Patriots fan, and here's the thing. The referees control the balls. The referees should control the balls, period. They, they should make sure that they're the right temp, uh, PSI, weight, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, I, I think this issue is getting totally way overblown. It's really hard to compare it to the other issues that we had early in the season because they were criminal and, and of a really serious nature. Right. And, you know, the whole thing, you know, be it Roger Goodell, Troy Vincent, you know, they don't seem to be on the same page. And Goodell just looks more and more like he's got to go. Yeah, I, I don't yeah. see any other yeah. way around it. The fact of the matter is, though, Uncle Mark, I think none of us right now have any confidence. We don't believe anything that we're hearing. That's the problem. And that's where I'm thinking that, unlike what I had to say back in the fall, where I said, I can't see that Goodell should go. I don't see where it's going to happen. I frankly now have changed my tune. I think the only way you're going to get that confidence back is if, in fact, he is changed. Yeah, well, you know, going back to, like, initial... We thought that was going to be a unique situation. We didn't see that necessarily credibility would continue to be questioned to the point of absurdity. And right. I think that's kind of what we've seen now. This ultimately has come down to its lowest common denominator, which is something of the absurd. I mean, uh, and with each, with each loss, with each step back, you're right. I mean, we as fans, my goodness, if we were running a business, we wouldn't allow any of this to continue to occur uh, unobstructed. Right. Some, somebody would step in and say, hold up, stop, we've, you know, we've, got to, we've got to change our course here. So that's what makes it even that much more frustrating for the fans to sit back and say, oh no, it's, it's governed properly. Uh, sidekick, on yesterday's uh, Frat House Saturday program, I had brought up that I had heard John Clayton on one of the national programs I was listening to the day before indicate that he thought this investigation could go for as long as three or four more weeks. This is a mistake, don't you think? The NFL should have wrapped this thing up before the Super Bowl, don't you think? Well, I, you know... <sighs> I don't know how long it takes to do one of these investigations. I mean, it would be nice to have this all cleaned up before the Super Bowl, but having, you know, I don't know how long, like I said, I don't know how long it takes to investigate this. And then you throw out there that apparently this is a much bigger problem because you've got uh, the the former Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, quarterback, uh, was Brad Johnson? Right. I think is what his name is. Right. Come out to say that during during a previous Super Bowl, he paid people to manipulate the footballs. Mm -hmm. You know, he he offered bribes and stuff. So apparently, you know, while the Patriots have you know egg on their face for this, that you know they got caught doing it. Apparently, this is a much more rampant problem than just the Patriots. You know, it's just that, hey, the Patriots were the ones to get caught. Right. Um, but then, you know, you go the other side, and not that, you know, we when we talk about, not that I want to bring NASCAR necessarily in this, but when we talk about Jimmy Johnson and Chad Knauss and how they push the limits of the rules because that's how they win. That's, you know, that's what winners do is you push the envelope. Right. And, and that's apparent with Bill Belichick and the Patriots. They want to win, and they're willing to push the envelope sometimes, and occasionally you get caught doing it. Mm -hmm. You know, So I don't know if it's you know, necessarily you know, that bad of a... You know, it does to the to fans and of course the media who are going to blow this up, you know, they're going to turn this into you know, this big huge thing. You know, and I don't know if I necessarily think that right. the flight gate is that really that big of an uh right. you know an issue in the game hey you got caught you know slap the wrist blah 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 you know i think the the stuff the the stuff we saw at the beginning of the season is much more well, an issue for the nfl versus this deflate gate i think this is just the you know the topic of the day and it's going to go away here you know, after the Super Bowl, nobody's going to talk about it again. You know, you'll have those Patriot haters who bring up, who will bring this up, just like they bring up the whole Spygate thing and that. But I want to throw one more topic out here for uh, confidence, comp, uh, confidence, competence, and credibility. And not right now, but potentially down the road, this issue with, you know, and obviously it's local to me, but this whole issue with the Rams possibly moving to L.A., you know, there's been talk about the owners may block it. 
you know, is it a money grab? You know, could you know, could Con- Kroenke go against the NFL and the city of St. Louis and just move out to L.A. and go rogue on everybody? And depending on how the NFL and Goodell handle that, you know, that could be another kind of blemish mm-hmm. on on them. Um, like I said, it's not. I don't think it's a credibility issue right now, but it could blow up in their face as well. Well, so, provided Goodell's still there. <laughs> well, and well, we now I and with kicking Goodell out, I don't know if that necessarily changes anything. You know, I think the NFL's gotten to the point now where they think they're you know they're too big to fail, and they're mm-hmm. you know they're you know. They're in this, you know, money grab, you know, expand the sport. We want to move to London. We want to, you know, market this. We want to do this. We want to do that. And I think that they're starting to get too much into expanding that they're starting to lose. They're starting to lose the details and potentially losing fan faith in the sport. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, what did Mark Cuban say? You know, the hogs yep. get fatter and fatter and fatter, and pretty soon the hogs start eating the hogs. You know, how, how, yep. how big is too big? Right. Um, Brandon, let me ask you real quick before, I, I know we're probably getting close to the edge here, but uh, let me ask you real quick. The press conference that you saw yesterday from um, Bill Belichick, obviously that was kind of hastily called. That was not a planned sort of situation. Uh, there was some feeling, some need, either by the, obviously by the New England Patriots, but it might have been prompted by the NFL for the, NFL, for the New England Patriots to come out and put some sort of a, a statement out there prior to media day, which I think now is Tuesday, actually. Um, were you satisfied with it? Yeah, for the most part. I, I like the idea of the explanation. He kind of covered the potential of, oh, well, we're, they're taking the, hot, the balls into a hot sauna or to blow them up, that kind of thing. The only thing they didn't directly say, which I wish somebody would have asked them at the end, or they would have just came right out and said it, is, you know, I wish somebody would have said, did anybody from the New England Patriots at any time in the first half take any air out of the balls? And they never really came out and said, no, we didn't take air out of the balls. I would have liked to have that just asked and answered, you know, just go on record whether you, you know, you're still investigating or not. You know who the ball boy are. You know who handles the balls. Ask straight out. Anybody leave air out of the balls? Yes or no? Right. I get his whole science thing and everybody's talked about it, whether, you know, (laughs) preparing the ball inside, outside. You know, it sounds like they spent days researching, you know, 20, 30 balls, whatever. We get it. I get it anyway. Apparently, Bill Nye, the science guy, actually came out yeah. today and scouted. That's awesome. <laughs> he said, you're full of... Well, I, all I can say to Bill Nye is, you know, we all drive cars and everybody loses a pound or two or oh, three every winter. I think it's... I, okay, I think well, but let me ask you this then. Why didn't the Colts balls deflate? Well, well exactly. I can answer I that that's where I am with it. Here's where I go with that. It's real simple. Aaron Rodgers has already came out. He likes his balls on the high side of the, <laughs> of the range. Andrew Luck <laughs> may just prefer a higher starting air pressure. We don't know. They Nobody asked. Nobody asked what the Colts balls were started at. The Patriots say that's they always the, start on at, the low right. side of the scale right. at 12 and a half. So if you're already on the low side and it's cold, stormy, damp like it was in New England, you're gonna and it has any chance of the ball dipping, you're going to go under. So, right. you know, the Colts may start closer to 13 and a half. Who right. knows? That's exactly what my point was yesterday, that I wanted to know what the benchmark was for Indianapolis Colts. Because we know what the threshold was for the new. Well, features. you know, if the, I don't even know so, if the NFL recorded it, but what right. they should have is okay. There show should us be a log. Every ball there showed should be, at. There should be a log, yeah, a right. log or a manifest. Of some right. Who knows if they recorded it? All right, uh, let's move on to our next topic. Um, with this coming uh, Super Bowl, this this coming Sunday, we're going to see. Actually, this record I think was broken with the last Super Bowl, but we're going to see. Now, this will be the sixth. Super Bowl that you've had the combination of Bill Belichick and Tom Brady and if I'm not mistaken that record was actually broken a couple of years ago when they met against the new uh, New York Giants uh, and that made it five this now makes it six there's been a lot made about the situation of the coach quarterback combination and the question I throw out there and we're going to take a look at quarterbacks in particular um, the question I start off with is, is that a key 
to championships because when you look over uh, championships, and I've got some numbers here, when you look over championships and the coach quarterback relationship, you know, you come across things like uh, uh, Chuck Noll and, and uh, Terry Bradshaw. You come across the, uh, uh, Landry and, uh, and Roger Staubach. Later on, I guess it was, did he, he had Danny White, I think, that actually went to Super Bowls. I don't know if White, White never actually won one. No. Uh, you had Montana and uh, Walsh. Walsh, Bill Walsh. Although were all four of Montana's under Walsh? Yeah, I believe so. I think the fifth one with Steve Young was with Seifert. With Seifert, okay. I think the four, the four Joe Montana ones were all Walsh. Right. If not, I, if not, he has three for sure. And even with quarterbacks that don't win, for gosh sake, you had Kelly. Jim Kelly went to the Super Bowl four times. I think that was all with Marv Levy. Yep. Uh, Fran Tarkenton went. I think that was all with Bud Grant. Uh, so. You know, that relationship, a lot, it seems perhaps maybe there is something to it. Go ahead. Uh, who wants to start us off? Uncle Mark? Oh, without what, what a doubt. Think? Without a doubt. Listen, who, who suffered more than the Cardinals this year? Because they had a starting quarterback. I think he was well primed, that being uh, Carson Palmer. I think he understood Arians. I think that would have made for fantastic postseason football from that franchise. And what happened? You lost the guy. You lost the guy. And, uh, you know, while... Arian's message was still going to go forward. He lost his guy. There was there was no way they were going to be able to do it. I mean, they tried it with Stanton, and then you know they moved down the ranks. But there there it is integral. There is no question about it. And it may not just be the head coach. It's going to be whoever's in the headset calling the signals. Right. You know. Yeah. Uh, you know, it might be a Pep Hamilton to Andrew Luck more than it is a Chuck Pagano. It's whoever is talking that language of this is what I see what do you see from the sideline to the field how is it the same how is it different I mean there's no question around it at this time of year the postseason see it's different because you can look at QB rating during the regular season and some quarterbacks have outstanding numbers but in that postseason things change and that's when that relationship is is really tested in my view uh, sidekick then, it seems to me that when we start using words like serviceable, uh, when we're talking about quarterbacks, uh, that's not exactly a great word because while you might have yourself a good serviceable season quarterback, more than likely perhaps maybe you don't have yourself a playoff quarterback. Brandon and I have talked about the fact that Sam Bradford over at your team might in fact be serviceable, uh, but I can't imagine you're thinking that he's going to take you to a Super Bowl. Well, I, I, to be honest, I don't even classify him as serviceable. <laughs> He's questionable. <laughs> well, I, you know, I've said this numerous times. I think the Rams are as guilty in Sam Bradford's performance and bringing him up as an NFL quarterback as Sam Bradford himself is. Um, but now he's too injury prone. You know, we keep seeing him get hurt over and over again, and he's out for his season. So that's my just or that's my excuse for saying that he's not serviceable. Is that I I don't have any faith that he can make it through a season. Um, I think you know, skill he skill wise, I think he's all right. Um, I think he's a little gun shy now because of the first few years and the fact that we didn't give him a steady offensive coordinator. For the first, you know, first three years, I think he had three different offensive coordinators. You know, this is the first year that he would have had the same offensive coordinator, and he got hurt in the preseason, was out for the season, and now we've lost our offensive coordinator, so next year it'll be a new guy. Right. So, you know, at this point, I think the Sam Bradford experiment's over, and I think we just need to, you know, see if we can trade him or, you know, just let him go and reach out and try to get somebody else. What do you do for you know? next year? Are you look? Are you uh, is? Uh, I've heard rumors your team is shopping in the draft. They should. I mean, I you know I hope Jeff Fisher is looking um, because I don't you know I honestly don't think the Sam Bradford's the answer. Yep. Yep. And that. So um, now with the you know going back to the QB coach relationship, um, I do think you know you've got some elite quarterbacks. You've got your Tom Brady's, your Pey Peyton Manning's, and your Aaron Rodgers. Um, you know, Pate Manning, he's a he's a field general. 
I mean, this guy could almost go without a head coach, I think. Call, you know, giving him plays. I think he's so he's at a level where he can call everything himself. He probably does mostly anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's that confidence uh, between the coach and him. But I think you know uh, the QB coach relationship is like a manager employee relationship. Um, you can have a serviceable quarterback. You know, an, an Andy Dalton. Um, <laughs> You know, well, a, I can run a, to, down for a Tony you. Romo, a Matt Ryan type uh-huh. quarterback. Okay. But I think it comes down to the coaching staff knowing what the strengths are and what the weaknesses are, and then playing to the potential and putting them in that position to be effective and to win games. You know, and I think there, you know, there needs to be that communication between the head coach and the quarterback mm-hmm. but I really think it become it comes down to being able to manage the skill level of your quarterback right. and that's the key um, Brandon now I, I've got a list here and, and I, that's why I was joking with psychic I've got a list here of what we would call I guess maybe the mid-tier quarterbacks or maybe we would like to interchange that word with serviceable with the exception I'm going to ask you a question about this list with the exception of Joe Flacco who has in fact already won a Super Bowl mm-hmm. Andrew Luck, Matt Stafford, Andy Dalton, Philip Rivers, Matt Ryan, Tony Romo, Jake Cutler. Which of those has the best chance of winning a, a, a Super Bowl? Oh, Andrew Luck. I agree. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, here's what it is. Here's what the whole coach quarterback thing comes down to. Go ahead. Trust. They establish a trust relationship that the coach will trust that quarterback. You know, with this team's game. You know, with not to make a mistake at a bit at, a, at the key time. And we're seeing that develop over the years. Peyton Manning was clearly you know, Tony Dungy's guy. I mean, the Colts and him, they won a lot of games together. Mm -hmm. Granted, they only won ring, but they still won a lot. So there's your coach, you know, relationship. I don't know that John Fox, Peyton Manning, was together long enough, three years. I don't know. But, you know, it's a trust factor, and I think that's how it goes. Of all the mid-tier guys you just mentioned, I mean, you kind of left Flacco off the list, but I think Flacco, of all the second-tier guys, is the one that's ready to make the move. They've already won one. Right. Him and John Harbaugh have the relationship. They've put up ridiculous stats in the playoffs over the last several years of, of wins and, and consecutive 100-yard quarterback ratings in games, et cetera, et cetera. As an AFC fan, as a Patriots fan, that team scares me more than any of them. The Colts, yeah, they're going to be good. Andrew Luck's going to be good. Um, the rest of them, it's going to take a hit or a miss. I mean, Phillip Rivers, we keep thinking he's going to come out, never does. Tony Romo looked like he took a sort of a step this year, didn't finish it. You know, Jay Cutler, who knows? I think that's the most raw physical talent that just has no brain on top of its head. I, I, I can't explain Jay Cutler any other way. Uh, the, 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 I guess maybe the point I want to get to with that coach quarterback situation is that when a quarterback is ready to step off, you have very few examples of a coach that can continue to um, exceed and, 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 and do really, really well. I can only think of a handful. Uh, I think Don Shula is one. He went from Bob Greasy, you go over to Dan Marino. Yet Marino never really got him anywhere except the one Super Bowl that they never won. But nonetheless, there was success with Marino. Uh, I think of, uh, of Landry, as I pointed out, going from Starback to Danny White. Um, I'm trying to think of others. You know, even when you go to, say, somebody like Brett Favre, Holmgren wasn't going to do anything without a Brett Favre. It, it really, really seems that the coach is dependent upon that elite quarterback in order to be successful. That's, the, I guess, the point I was trying to make. I don't know if anybody's got any final thoughts on it. Uh, there's a few exceptions, like a Trent Dilfer winning the Super Bowl, etc. That but, is an exception. Well, You're done right. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot. <laughs> and then that's a Brad Johnson exception, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Joe Gibbs. Joe Gibbs in Washington was the one who won multiple with multiple starting quarterbacks. That's a good point. Yeah, you're He's right really there. He's really the only one that you can point to. Yeah, okay, he won with it, Doug Williams. Doug Williams. And he won Theisman. with uh, Rippin. Mark Rippin won one, right. I think. Theisman, uh, you know, and... Brad Johnson was actually a Washington quarterback Correct. for a while. Correct. Went on to win. So I think he's really the only one that you can point to that didn't have the quote unquote same guy. Throughout. Right, right. All right. Uh, if you're hearing us on our radio broadcast, let me remind you, please, that you can touch base with any of us right now, if you wish, uh, by giving us a call at our number 
347-826-9964. You got the number? 347-826-9964. If you're listening via computer and you're Skype capable, hit the Skype button. And, that, and right now, we're live. You can call, you're, we're going to take your calls. Uh, and chat room, of course, is wide open. All right. All right, let's get into our third topic here. And uh, yeah, we're doing, I think we're doing pretty good on time, uh, Jen. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, I see it there. Um, we had a couple of teams make the playoffs this season. Um, that did not make the playoffs last season. I think we see that every single year. There's going to be a couple of teams that are going to make the playoffs that didn't make the year before. And so the question I start off with here, looking at this past season, the standings, where they, there, I mean, there were some exciting things. I mean, look, we know that things went right up until the very, very last day. <clears throat> In fact, good job for the scheduling right up to the very, very last game. Um, but there were a couple of teams, very good records, winning records. We're not talking about the NFC South, of course. Uh, and the question I throw out there, of the following teams that I'm going to throw out, and of course if there's more than what I'm suggesting here, please bring up, bring up another name. Of the teams that I'm going to bring up here, the Philadelphia Eagles, the Buffalo Bills, Kansas City Chiefs, San Diego Chargers, which one of those teams makes the playoffs next year? Uh, sidekick, what do you think? Did I hit them all, or is there a team perhaps maybe I didn't miss? I, I, are the St. Louis Rams? I know. Let's this way. Are the St. Louis Rams making it? <laughs> yeah, the Rams aren't going to. Okay, all right. On. We got that out of the way. We're we're praying for we're we're just praying to break even. Come on now. <laughs> oh boy. And we're praying we don't go to L.A. Yeah, so. right. I hear that. <laughs> um. Anyway. Uh. Eagles, Bills. Mm. Eagles, Bills, Chiefs, uh, Chargers. Wow. Um. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna say that it's hard. Yep. See, I, I. Well, okay. Let's eliminate. I don't think the Bills are going to be in contention. Mm. I don't think Rex Ryan going up there is going to change how you know going to make them all of a sudden a playoff contention team. Um, you know, we didn't see much out of them with the Jets, and I don't really honestly have much faith in him with the Bills. Wow. Um, the Chiefs. The Chiefs have the potential to get there. Um, uh, again, I don't have a lot of confidence in uh, Andy Reid getting them there. Uh, right. You know, we saw what he did with Philadelphia. He, you know, him and him and Mc, uh, McNabb were dominant for years, uh, but he's fell off the last few years. I don't know if he's just lost his mojo or what's going on. Um, and I haven't seen. I, you know, they had that breakout year. Uh, when Andy went to the Chiefs, right. but I've seen them decline since. So I don't, I don't really see the Chiefs getting in there. Um, the the Eagles, I'm going to give 50-50. Uh, you know, I'm not impressed with what Chip Kelly did with the Eagles this season. Uh, after you know making the playoffs last season, um, so I'm going to go with the Chargers. How about that, Chargers? So you think the Chargers have the least amount of work to do in order to get to uh, to postseason? Um, yeah. Brandon, there are a lot of people that say uh, the Eagles just need to tweak a few things. That if they can address say the secondary, even with a Nick Foles running the team, uh, they're they're going to make the, look. All they needed was one more win to get in. Yeah. Uh, the, if if the proposed playoff additions would have happened this year, the Eagles and the Texans both would have been in. Right. So they would have been in. And I, of the of the four we're talking about, I think the Chargers and the Eagles are the most poised, and I'd almost be shocked if they both don't make it. Because for a couple of reasons. One, the Chargers are in a in the AFC West. We don't know what's going on with Peyton Manning and the Broncos. That's still kind of in flux. I don't think anybody's expecting dominant Peyton Manning back ever again. Yeah. And we don't even know what's up with all the coaching, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll see how that plays out. The The, the Chiefs need to figure out what they're doing with quarterback. I mean, Alex Smith is quote-unquote serviceable, but I don't think he's the elite enough guy to take him there. Uh, I'm a Foles guy. I think the Eagles are good. I think, I think Nick Foles is going to come back. He was injured. They were doing really well before he got hurt. I hate Mark Sanchez. I think that's why the Eagles... Oh, they're done with him anyhow. Yeah, and he's done. But I think Nick Foles is going to be... If he can stay healthy, I think they're going to win the NFC East, and that's going to be that. 
Foles is operating on the last year of his rookie contract, do you think his agent is going to sit for that? Yeah, I think they'll play it out because he got hurt and missed the end. If, if he, it, I think his situation would have been a lot stronger had he been healthy and took them into the playoffs and won a game or two. Right. Um, so, yeah, I, I think he'll play it out. I don't think there'll be an issue. He's probably got one of those fifth-year options out there that the Eagles will have to, you know, make a choice on. Mm -hmm. And that that's huge money for any first-round pick or whatever. I don't know. if He's the same as a second-round pick, so I don't know how that's going to play out. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see. But, yeah, I think he'll play out this year. All right. Uh, Uncle Mark, uh, in the preseason roundtable that we did, you were real high on the Minnesota Vikings. Mm. Mm, could they shock next year? I mean, I'm going to tell you, Bridgewater looks like a keeper. Yeah, I was impressed with them. I liked what uh, Zimmer did in his first year. I mean, all eyes were on them. Of course, you know, back then we were assuming Adrian Peterson was going to be the guy. And right. I think that was one of their, obviously, it was a serious loss for them. They, they attempted to and made a good, uh, a, a good forward progress in having a running game, although it was not nearly as explosive as they thought. Uh, I think there are a few pieces away. I'll tell you what, on this list that you've mentioned, yep. I really, I go, my eyes go right to San Diego because Philip Rivers needed a running game, but I think essentially McCoy had all the other pieces in place to make that team go. And Philip Rivers is four wins and five losses in the postseason, so he's almost 500. And I think had they had that dominant running game, that's about the only piece they really needed. It's good Their point. defense was good point. was reasonably good. Yep. Uh, they weren't bad at home. They weren't bad on the road. They were sort of middling. Uh, frustrating for all of us. I mean, uh, for fantasy yep. uh, value. Yeah, yeah. And that sometimes it was frustrating what we were going to get with Philip Rivers. But essentially, he plays the same temperament Philip Rivers whether it's postseason or preseason or regular season mm -hmm. he does command and I think I like that team right now in the West AFC as possibly the strong favorite going into 2015 we'll see what they can do with the draft or, or trades to get that missing running team. It's very possible we could see a team like San Diego fill a void, say, left by the Denver Broncos. Right. Look at the coaching staff, completely annihilated, gone, right? No OC, brand new OC, brand new DC, brand new head coach. Kubiak, we know, doesn't have the greatest relationship with Peyton. Peyton says, hey, I'm going to come back for one more year, barring the fact that I passed the physical, which I have no reason to believe he won't. But... Uh, could be a very, very rocky season for the Denver Broncos. All that free agency they got to deal with could very easily be a situation where they just, maybe just one more win, they step in San Diego and fills the void. Right. Um, you know, but, uh, Atlanta Falcons, you know, were they what we thought they were? It turns out for a second year they were. And, you know, Matt Ryan, I mean, he, he's got, he's one of those youngsters. What is he, five, yeah. six years mm -hmm. is all in the league. But he's one of those youngsters that has a very, very good QBR during the regular season. But, you know, he's 1-4 and four postseason. Yeah. Right. One win, four losses. Serviceable quarterback and for the season. He doesn't. He, he hasn't taken the progressive next step. Like, he, he's, he's improved modestly, and then he takes a step back. And then, okay, he has a very good postseason game and wins, and then they lose that next round. So it'll be curious to see now that Smith is gone, if, if they're able to shake something up, because, you know, we're yep. really, we there's know. a lot of questions there from the front office. We're going to talk about coaches in a moment. That yeah, thing's, that Dan, thing's about Dan, Dan, Matt Ryan, Dan Quinn is going to be the Yeah, coach. I know. You, we, the we're, we're going to talk about that in a moment. The 49 of the Seahawks, once the game's over, will be the coach. Right, we're going to talk about that. Would Matt Ryan, though, forget Dan Quinn. Would Matt Ryan mm. perhaps do better in a different system now at this point? Well, it depends. What I mean, Mark decide. brings up some good points. It's He's a serviceable quarterback, it seems, during the season. Yeah, and, and you know, the, I wouldn't tweak much on that offense. That that team's problem this year was defense. They running couldn't game. stop anybody. Where, right. well, well, Atlanta, no pass rush. They need a running game again. Well, Here we go again. Game. They need a running game, but they have serviceable Defensively, receivers. They, they, could, they yeah. can put points up, but they let up so many points mm -hmm. is what killed them. Mm -hmm. yep. And Dan Quinn, being a defensive-minded coach, is going to go in there and shake that up. A lot of people, that's why they, they wanted to see Rex Ryan go there. They thought he'd be the shot in the arm for that defense. Right. And unfortunately for Rex, and I know we were talking about Buffalo a little bit in that first list, until they figure out their quarterback, I don't think Rex Ryan means a hill of beans difference. Their defense was great last year. I don't think Rex Ryan makes it any better. Not enough until they solve the E.J. Manuel slash 
whoever's going to be quarterback. Who's going to be the quarterback. Right, right, I mean, right. And Wharton. that's gone. That Wharton. NFC South, something's got to give. There has well, to be some reason to believe down there because none of those teams were dominant. Real quick before we jump off the topic, uh, in, in, in five words, six words, seven words or less, uh, does New Orleans come back next year or are we seeing this team just spiral out of control? Any thoughts? Uh, they obviously need to do something. Uh, uh, Rob Ryan uh, has a lot of explaining to do during this offseason, and hopefully he'll get his uh, ducks in order because that was their biggest weak link, in my view. Mm -hmm. They better if they want to get Breeze a championship before he's done. Right. He's getting up there. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I had the same thing. You know, I, you, know you, you would think Rob Ryan come in there was going to fix up that defense, and that defense looked even worse. Mm -hmm. So apparently Rob Ryan isn't the answer either. Right. Right. All right. Um, I said we were going to talk a little bit about coaches, coaching changes. This is the time of year when we do that, obviously. Uh, well, I mean, we talk about it at the beginning of the season, too. And we probably will... Uh, six months from now, but right now it's really, really fresh. Last year at this time, we had five coaching openings to the best of my uh, remembrance. The Lions were open, Buccaneers, Redskins, Vikings, and Browns. This year we ended up, uh, I believe, with a seven. Um, Broncos, uh, that odd situation all of a sudden just completely deteriorated. We found out there were problems, well, going back for quite a while. John Fox out, Gary Kubiak is in. Bears, uh, Mark Tressman out, not surprising. John Fox now takes over the Bears. As we just pointed out, Rex Ryan out at the Jets. Todd Bowles takes over there, interesting move. Uh, 49ers, Jim Harbaugh, been rumored all season long. Right from the very beginning of the season, all kinds of issues with the locker room. He's out, going to Michigan. Uh, Jim Tom Sula is in. Um, Bills, a little bit surprised, I'm going to be honest. Doug Marone out. Rex Ryan takes over. Uh, down at the Raiders, Dennis Allen was fired before the season was concluded. Tony Sperano as well out. Jack Del Rio from the Denver Broncos is in. Uh, and the Falcons, we know at this point right now, uh, Mike Smith is out. I don't know who's taking over, Arthur Blank. Um, we don't know. <laughs> no, thank we No, I know. <laughs> it's a foregone. I place. know, I know, I know. But so many of these other teams now, Brandon, are working on scouting. They're working on, on taking a look at draft situation. What in the world are the Falcons doing? I guess are they working on, on autopilot at this point? Well, actually, no. If you read the news, the Falcons have put the staff together. Oh, They've okay. been hiring coaches all week. And so that clearly tells you they know who's going to be the coach. Right. right. They, know they the interviewed the Quinn twice. Mm -hmm. They just can't hire him until the Seahawks right. Right. got to wait. Play. Mm -hmm. So well, I would think that these coaches that they've hired have, have, have Quinn's approval. Obviously. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. And, and you know what? I think Quinn's going to be good for that team. I think he's done a great job with Seattle's defense. And here's the best part. Seattle has a built-in replacement. Their, court, their secondary coach has put together an incredible set of, of defensive backs at that team repeatedly, and his name's come up for coordinators, yet he didn't get any interviews because they knew he was the built-in successor. Mm -hmm. So Seattle's going to be fine, Quinn. I think the, the Falcons are going to be fine. Of all these changes, the one I really, really like is I think John Fox is going to do well in Chicago. So I do think I. that team has so the quickest I. turnaround chance. To be honest with you, the rest of them, they could all fail. Todd Bowles, I, I'm not going to say much because uh. I don't know what to expect. He's a young coach. Yeah. If he comes out like, uh, you know, Tomlin, who's a similar type, young, defensive-minded, you know, former defensive back, he might be all right. He could I be think good. Tom, I think Todd Bowles has the most to lose. Yes, but and he's going into a really tough situation That's in my New point. York. That's yeah, why I, I agree, think he's got the most to lose. If he comes out of that and makes the Jets decent, he's going to – he'll be all right. Mm -hmm. I, if he can. I, I, I don't know. The rest of them, I think it's a crapshoot. I, so I mean, I. they're all recycled guys, except for Jim Tomasula. Tom, Tom Sula, Ooh, I don't know anything about. I don't yeah, know anything well, about Tom Evidently, Sula. he's died in the wool there, and they knew kind of that he was the heir apparent in, in the wings. Right. You know, and uh, interestingly enough, he was conspicuous conspicuously absent in the early chatter because, in fact, I guess they wanted to get through the Rooney rule and that kind of thing. You know, uh, we mentioned Doug Marone. Nobody's seen from him. And it's interesting, you know, when he first <laughs> jettisoned out of the, out of the Bills going to the Jets. organization, right, there was a lot of early chatter. But let's not forget, everybody knew he was taking, what, $4 million with him out the door? And so while I think his PR people and his camp 
we're trying to uh, gold rush with that. Hey, here's this guy's ripe. He's ready. I think <laughs> throughout the league, everybody sat back and said, you know what? I'm not double paying this guy. And by the way, uh, after, a couple of, after a couple of years in Buffalo, what did he really do? Yeah, I mean, let's get it straight. It's I not mean, like you're buying into Mike Holmgren. Here. Yeah. I mean, I, it's, I, it's Doug Marone. He's I, got yeah. two years under his belt with the, in, in the pro level. I, I like you, Fred House Mike, I was surprised he up and he up and bailed. Surprised my, my thought would have been, word, yeah. just go ahead and, and ride out that last year of your contract. But exactly. You know, whatever. Exactly. That's fine. He sees greener pastures, and there's mixed reviews from players and other coaches as to whether or not he's a real control freak or what. So. Any thoughts on some of these coaching changes, uh, Psychic? Well, you know, to run down the list, uh, the Broncos the Broncos are one year away from mediocrity. Okay. Um I, you know, once that's Peyton's out possible. in Denver, I don't care who the coach is, they're they're going to go back to being nothing. Um, uh, you know, I'm not surprised Mark Tressman's out. Um, <laughs> it with the Chicago. Um, I was actually surprised he got picked up as quickly as he yeah, did as an OC. OC. Yeah, you know, I think John Fox is going to bring in some. Uh, some credibility to the to the Bears, and I think uh, we'll see some good things out of the Bears as long as John Fox and the ownership can uh, agree on things. Right. Um, the Jets, Todd Bowles coming in there. I don't care who the head coach is. Until you get that front office fixed, I don't think the Jets are going to do – go anywhere. Are you, you, um, do you mean front office or do you mean ownership? Yeah, Woody. Yeah. Well, Talking front Woody. office and ownership, I mm-hmm. guess. Because there's you a new know. GM, so we'll have to see how that goes. Um, the 49ers, eh, that's probably a pick em. Um The Bills, I don't think you're going to see the Bills get any better with Rex Ryan. I mean, maybe, you know, maybe new ownership and stuff. Um, they'll be able to get something going, but I'm, you know, I'm not feeling too well about that one. The Raiders, again, uh, Jack Del Rio in. I, until you fix the ownership there, I don't think the Raiders are going to amount to anything. Good luck with that. Um, and the Falcons, you know, uh, you know, if Quinn can come in there and fix up that defense and they can, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm sorry, you know, I'm a huge fan of Steven Jackson, but I think it's time for Steven Jackson to hang it up. So do I. Um, you know, it, he's just not the guy he used to be, and I think he's just hanging on. Yep. Um, they need to, you know, uh, and, I, you know, they need to bring in some better running backs. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sold on – their their running back core, um, but I I you know I think you know you got Julio Jones and stuff like that. Uh, Matt Ryan is you know I think is a fairly decent quarterback. I rate him a little bit higher than serviceable. Um, so you know I think the Falcons will probably be all right. Yeah. Antoine Smith, the running back they had, was looking pretty good till he got hurt late in the year too. Yep. Yeah, yep. might be yeah. a potential mm-hmm. plug in, mm-hmm. at least a piece to start with. Mm-hmm. A lot of brouhaha was made about, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> about the fact that Raiders Brass had been bringing Mike Shanahan back in, and then all of a sudden they do this turnaround, and lo and behold, it's Jack Del Rio. I look at that one and I go, Jack Del Rio hasn't proven to me that he's head coach worthy. Exactly. That's why I don't see the the Raiders. I, you know, I, I don't. I, I'd love to hear from some Raider fans. Maybe there are some out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, three four seven eight two six nine nine six four. When we get to the break, Raiders fans, please give me a call because I'd like to hear what you're thinking is about Jack Del Rio taking over. Are you like really excited about that? I, I don't know. I, if I were one, I'd sit back and go, huh? Eh, eh. I don't see where it's all that big of an improvement. Um, um, I, I frankly, you know, I don't know. I think I think Rex Ryan could do. Could do okay with the Bills. I really do. They need to get a quarterback. I think they could do answer the quarterback question, and I would agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. They got a good defense. Wait, wait, wait. Are we talking about Rex Ryan and quarterback controversies? Well, <laughs> hey, he walked into a quarterback controversy. I mean, they benched EJ Manuel and played Kyle Orton all last year, and then yeah. Orton abruptly retired. Yeah, right. Exactly. I mean, what do you got? I mean, he it wasn't that wasn't that wasn't Rex's fault. It's how he deals with it moving forward. Well, right. I agree, but we already see. You know, come on, Geno Smith. What yeah. did he do with him for a couple of years? So yeah, I don't, Mark Sanchez. I don't see yeah, that he's got a sterling record. I'm you know, still not convinced. He loves, he loves Sanchez too. 
too. Oh, he did. Uh, I'm still there's not talk, convinced. There's talk he might be pulling him up there to Gino Buffalo. Smith. Him, so. See, no, right? Jesus. Have fun with he that. does it. Uh. Gino Smith, just like Mark Sanchez did, I think. I think Gino Smith needs a change of scenery. I'm not convinced that he can't play professional football in the NFL. I'm not convinced of that yet. Um, but uh, I would say the same of C.J. Manuel. I think you still have to give them a little bit more fair time. Fair time. You know, this well, is what... They, they may. You don't yeah, know. They, they, they may have to. Cutting. They I may have to. Him See, right. I think the difference between somebody like, say, a C.J. Manuel... And, or E.J. Manuel. I'm, I'm sorry. And uh, what, what, uh, what sidekick has seen with Sam Bradford is... Sam Bradford has had the opportunity. They have given him time. And I think it's fair to say enough is enough. But when you're talking about somebody like Emmanuel or even Geno Smith, who has only worked under one particular scheme uh, and, and really not been given a whole heck of a lot of time, to me, I think that they, I, I don't think it's fair. I don't think it's a fair barometer. I guess maybe that's what I'm saying. Hey, you know, and it might even be, look, that might even be true when it comes right down to it <clears throat> for uh, our buddy Johnny Football up in Cleveland. Oh. You know, now, uh, and look, I realize a lot of us are ready to, to just throw that one out the door. It, it sounds like, sounds like the Browns the are even, right. No, well, no, I mean, Jimmy Haslam comes out the other day. Uh, Mark put up a great article over on our Facebook page. Jimmy Haslam comes out the other day and says, uh, we got to correct the, the quarterback situation. We got to correct it right now. We need one for 2015. 2015. Yeah. We so don't have one. It's We're evident. Not sure, he's in the building. Right. It's evident that yeah. the, the highest level of management at that team doesn't have any confidence. But I'm not sure if we've given Johnny Football, Johnny Manziel, a fair shake. The problem with Manziel in what is, seven quarters? Uh, yeah, but Johnny Six. Manziel's work ethic sounds to be questionable. I, I understand. I don't what you're think saying. any NFL yeah. team out there can take a chance on a guy I who's what not you're willing saying. to work for it. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, see, this is a topic that you know, unfortunately, we don't have time to really talk about. But I'd love to sit down and discuss is the recent. QB classes that we've had, and what seems to be like a ton, a batch of busts mm -hmm. coming out. Mm -hmm. You know, with the exception of Andrew Luck, I I have problems naming any other quarterback Bridgewater. That, Bridgewater. that's Bridgewater. come out that's, that's right. been worth, you know, peanuts. Right. You know. Well, I mean, that's even to go back to you know Sam Bradford. Uh, you I, know what I mean? I think that. Well, I agree with you there, but I think that the I think the jury's out on Bridgewater. Um. I, that that would be the closest one I can think of right off the top of my head. Um, I, you know, I, I was going to say uh, Mecklenburger too. I mean, I don't know if we really know exactly no, what the Titans have got. As long as they got well, I mean, the, the Titans have said that they're going to be looking at a quarterback in the draft. I don't know why, but yeah. apparently that's the case. Uh, but no, I agree with you. It's like, and we can certainly. I mean, you know, that's a topic we can get into. Well, we've got. We're going to have. Uh, we're going to have thirty minutes of open air here. Well, you know, shortly once we get through uh, the video portion here, uh, let's get to our fifth topic here, uh, and we're going to wrap it up this way. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll try to keep it a little bit lighthearted for the for the final nine or ten minutes here. Or so uh, we got the big game coming uh, this Sunday, Super Bowl Forty Nine, uh, and we know who the uh, who the participants are. We got the Seattle Seahawks. We got the New England Patriots. Um, Without giving away predictions, because I want to get into those, I guess, uh, in the in the in the final thirty minutes of this program. Uh, but before we, uh, any, without getting into any predictions, any any thoughts on it? Go ahead, Brandon. I'll let you start off. Uh, anything that? Uh, if it wouldn't be for all the controversy about footballs, I think we would have one of the potential best Super Bowl matchups. You think so? In a long time. The line keeps hovering around to pick them. Yeah. It was started out with Seattle being half. favored. Now New England's favored by one. Uh, you got a really strong offense going up against a really strong defense. You got a, you know, a not a bad defense going up against a not a bad offense. Granted, doesn't have the best passing game on Seattle side, right. but they have what many consider to be one of the best running backs in the league. So, you know, this is the makings of a very competitive, very good Super Bowl that we could see, you know, go back and forth. You could see, uh, you know, defense. You got premier cornerbacks on both sides of the ball. We could see an interception, pick six touchdowns yep. on either side. I mean, this game has a ton, a ton of appeal as a football game, and yet all we got to talk about is the air pressure. Yeah, oh, I hear you. I understand. It. Well, let's hope. You know, look, we got a week I yet, know. so maybe it'll, maybe it'll die down. But um, uh, of course, we got a week. We're, 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 
we're bro we're program recording this on Sunday, but uh, it'll air on Thursday. Uh, sidekick, uh, without giving away your prediction, which we'll get into, uh, we've got you two. We got you and Brandon uh, kind of locking horns here, right? Because you're 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 right with the the Hawks. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna ride the Hawks train this year. Uh, well, I wrote yeah wrote it last year. Um, and you know, this is going to be an interesting uh, uh, matchup. I think this is going to should be a good Super Bowl. It's going to be interesting to see how the Seahawks defense. Um, I you know I think the Seahawks offense is a little questionable um, against the Patriots, um, but I I think where you're going to see the difference will be in the Seahawks defense and how they handle the Patriots offense. Um, I'm not so much worried about their running game as I am their passing game. Um, I'm a little concerned because we saw the Packers jump out to that big lead against the the Seahawks um, last week, but the Seahawks, you know, didn't lose you know confidence yeah. and just kept playing the game and right. wound up you know with almost unsurmountable odds coming back to win that game. And I you yeah. know I think they're going to need that this week or. Uh, yeah, I guess this week uh, against the Patriots in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I think defensively, uh, it's this is going to be you know an interesting game to see how you know see how Sherman plays um, and stuff like that. So, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, again, I don't want to give anything away, but I know you're pretty passionate. Uh, looking forward to the to the Patriots. Coming out. Well, You've been pretty vocal a yeah, little bit. Yeah, and we'll, we'll get into that. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into yeah, that. Yeah. We'll get into that. <laughs> in our next 30 minutes when we go live. But this is what I would say. On on the one hand, what's what's great about it is you have two number one seeds, right? And that doesn't happen very often. So yeah, so essentially, point. essentially going into it on paper, we have the two best, the two most deserved yep. teams going. Uh, on the flip side, and, and where I guess I have, a little more problem with it, and and I think maybe the average fan does. You either like these teams or you hate them, and there is sort of that loss of a middle ground because there isn't that underdog. And clearly, from the line that we've discussed, that's a good point. There isn't an underdog uh, as far as we know, unless late money comes in and throws it. But even still, there's no underdog to pull for. Mm -hmm. And so, if you're an NFC guy and you really hate the the Seahawks, but you you're an NFC guy and you really don't care who it is on the other side. Uh, rooting interests in this year tend to be a little more polarizing than mm -hmm. than I would like in the matchup. Uh, as I say, in the next thirty minutes, I'll I'll yeah. tell you what I think about about both teams and that. But it is interesting. It's a little more a little more polar this year in terms of our Super Bowl. Agreed. Agreed. Uh, again, to keep this kind of light, I thought what we would do here is. Uh, well, you know, there's so much talk this week Time about... Time to put money on the table? Exactly. We're putting we, some we, money we, on the we, table? We, <laughs> <laughs> Get my wallet out. We've talked... There's an awful lot to talk about. Prop bets and what have you. So I Make it rain up, up in here. Yeah, that's it. I, yeah. I thought we'd come up with a couple of frat house sports prop bets. Uh, number one prop bet here, uh, folks. Uh, weigh in on it, gentlemen. Uh, jump in on it. Number of times we will hear, quote-unquote, deflate gate... Now, this must be during the actual live broadcast of the game, not pre-game, not post-game. It must be during the game. This handicapper has set the over under at 10. Deflate gate, huh? Go ahead, Brandon. How many times are you going to hear it? I say way under. I think the NFL... Oh, way under I 10. Think, I think the NFL goes to NBC and says, do your best to not even talk. Knock it off. Knock it off. They don't want to take away from the game itself by talking about it anymore. That's what this week was for, this last week. Okay, That's why point. everybody talked. That's why... I think that's what prompted the, the press conference yesterday with uh, Belichick. Right, right, right. They're trying to put it to bed so they can get on to the actual game. I agree, and that's I think they wanted opinion. to address so I'm going to say they'll, they'll bring it up maybe during the pregame show, but when the game itself starts, I don't think you get any okay. more time. I agree with you, and I think that's why they did what they did yesterday ahead of media day. Sidekick, over, under? Uh, well, let me... Let me get a clarification. Uh, so, are we talking about during the game, or are we including halftime with Katy Perry? Why you think? Uh, because you know, if we're talking about deflate or inflate, uh oh, um, you know, Katy Perry might be some inflation. Um. <laughs> nah, I think she's all natural. Oh no. 
Uh, I take it you're going with the under? Uh, well, you know, it is Katy Perry. I might, oh, I might prefer mind. the over. Oh, boy. Never mind. Um, <laughs> I'll go, I'll go, I'll I'll go, go with, with the over. Oh, oh, he's going with the over, over, under, uh, Mark. Yeah, I mean, no, I, yeah, by then it'll be under. But, I mean, I think you're still going to see uh, ridiculous nonsense like the word deflatriates. I think we're going to oh, see. Oh, no! I think we're, yeah, I think you're going to see a natural progression away from the hashtag deflate gate, but I think you're going to just see it naturally continue to spin. We got the evolution. Yeah, I think you're going to see some of that. Oh, outstanding. Uh, Fred House Sports, uh, prop bet number two. Uh, Lynch grabs the ball. Yes or no? <laughs> oh, the NFL's already come out. I know. No. That's why I'm saying. <laughs> I say I say you don't push that. You, you don't, don't think so, huh? They, they've already threatened to kick off from the 20, so. Okay. All right. Uh, um, Go ahead, Uncle Mark. Yes, no? Oh. Hey, you know, this is that team that you think is, uh, well, we're going to hear what you think. Yeah, yeah. See, now you're pushing you're pushing me to, to start early here. But I'll be honest with you. I, I don't buy anything that Marshawn Lynch is selling, and I say no. At the end of it all, he doesn't have the balls to grab his balls. Okay. Whoa. All right. Sidekick. Yes, no? Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Come on. Sidekick's already going <laughs> Mr. Mr. Anti-Social Media. <laughs> He's already totally going to do it and not say anything yeah, about it in the interview so. after yeah, the game. Right, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you. All right. Front House Sports prop bet number three. Will Marissa Tomei make a surprise appearance at Super Bowl 49? Of course, uh, Mona Lisa. Mona Lisa Vito. Oh, I was, was gonna Marissa Tomei. Will someone fly her in to make a surprise appearance at Super Bowl 49? What do you think? Yes, no. Hey, she can make a surprise appearance here in St. Louis. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't kick her out. All the stars Just come saying. Out the Super Bowl. I know. This is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, listen, she probably wasn't going to go before, but now I will bet. I will bet there's a bunch of people out there right now ringing her phone going, oh, come on, Marissa, you got to show up at the game. I understand. What do you think? Well, I, I would say that's probably so. Even Julian Edelman is taking calls from her and saying, I'll send you tickets. <laughs> so that might tell you something. Wow, Julian Edelman, of all people, he won't even give his family no, I tickets. Know, but he's down with Mona Lisa Vita. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? She might show up in a Gronk jersey. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Uh, you know how Gronk likes his ladies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I heard Gronk and Ader. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, listen, too, too much fun. Too, too much fun. But we need to do video programs a little more yeah, often. I maybe, know. maybe since we figured out how to put this set together here at Fred House, we will do this more often. We can only muster it once every six months. I know. We can it, 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 it's <laughs> just way too much work. Yeah, I know. It's way too much work. Too much pressure. <laughs> there we go. Uh, all right. Listen, I appreciate everybody tuning in to us here, watching us here on YouTube. And, of course, listening in to us right now over on our Fred House Sports Radio Network. Uh, let me remind you, please. You can catch up to us right now live, and we're going to be going live for the next 30 minutes over at 347-826-9964. You can get a hold of us right there. Uh, and be sure to be tuning in to us on uh, our Frat House Sports Radio Network over on Blog Talk Radio. All right. Um, I'm going to sign this one off a little bit differently because, of course, I'll be doing the final sign-off over on the air. You know, everybody's watching this. You're watching it. You're going, hey, I want to see what happens next. Hey, we're... Get over to the show or go to archive. Look up Frat House Sports over on Blog Talk Radio. Because we're going to tell you what we really think about this Super That's Bowl. That's right. <laughs> there you go. All right. Make sure, <laughs> make sure you're tuning in to us over on Blog Talk Radio. And thanks so much for joining us here this evening. Take care. Go station oh, identification. We need, yeah, we need go ahead. station we need identification. Your, you're listening to the Frat House Sports Radio Network. Brought to you in living color. Bye. <laughs> um, don't forget to give us a holler. Tony high. Romo is a miracle. 347-826-9964. Yeah. yeah. Call, us get up. Call us out. <laughs> Come on, sidekick. What's going on out there? What's the weather like? Yeah. St. Louis, we're supposed to get a storm uh, for the next two days of uh, historic proportion. Two storms. <clears throat> 50 degrees, baby.
Get out of here. Living the life. No, you're you're wow. you're joking. Wow. I just want to put in that it's 50 degrees in Dewey Beach, Delaware right now. No, it's uh. not. Yes, it is. 50 degrees in Dewey Beach, it's, Delaware. Is it really 50 degrees in St. Louis? Hold on. Hold uh, on. Hold on. Incoming. Let me see what I can make up. Yep, yep. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, the latest. Latest in 46. What is it? 46, 46, sir. Wow. I don't think it's 46 here. What is it here, Jen? 38. 38. That's now, if right. that was centigrade, we'd be okay. Yeah, that's true.